And by the way, a man with the softest lips you'll ever know in your life. Let's bring oh, on Rick Fox to the show. Hi, Rick. Brad. Boy, could I use another kiss right now. <laughs> hey, Rick. Rick, let's let's clear this up, Rick, right away because Fred has been he's been giddy all day. He's been excited all day knowing that you were coming on. And he, he has told this story to me in the past. And Fred, I'm gonna let you tell the story. Maybe Rick remembers it, but he often claims, Rick, that you have the softest lips in the world. And here's the story. Here's the story, Rick. And you tell me if you remember it. So when the Lakers were making their playoff run, NBC used to have the games. And at the end of every game, we would do a post-game show. And you were always our guest right after the game. Do you remember that? I sure do. I sure do. And you're playing in Sacramento. You beat the Kings. I'm on. You walk up. And you kiss me right on the cheek. And then we get started. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. (laughs) And I don't. And, and, and then I, we want to go back. All right. And I said, and I, I've told people throughout my life, that kiss on my cheek, Rick Fox has the softest lips of anyone I've ever encountered in my life. It's true. That's a, that's a huge compliment. Thank you so much. Well, Frank, Rick, that's now a, listen. I, that, moment, that moment is one of my uh, most special moments in my career. Um, that that entire series that the culmination of that moment um obviously you were entrenched in that ride with us the entire way through and you knew you knew in that moment how elated we all were and how excited we were to to be through that 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 stage in the playoffs and oh my gosh man i i think of it every once in a while and and i'm glad that it was sealed with a kiss (laughs) <laughs> oh man rick we got that air check now we we he's never gonna let that go rick man oh my goodness you just validated everything for him but listen listen i i do want to get into to some of those stories like you just mentioned man you have you're making me relive some of that and i think people need need to hear that you know we're seeing on the different tv shows of, of past games being played and things of that nature we're playing Dodger games on our radio station here so fans can listen so they, they love it and, and they show their appreciation by calling in and letting us know but but before we get into that I just, how are you doing man how are you how are you coping with everything what are you doing to pass the time and 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 uh, how's it going at the, at oh, the Rick Fox house yeah one one step in in one foot in front of the next right but but the, the, the feet going in front of the the other one doesn't get you very far these days and so it feels a lot, a lot like Groundhog Day. Um, you check in with your, in my case, I check in with my kids and loved ones. Uh, we're kind of spread out around the world right now, and whether it's the Bahamas or my daughter in Orange County or my son in the Marina or you know, family in New York, like it, we're we're going, we're all going through the same thing. Is how how can we stay connected to the people in our lives to make sure that they're okay, physically, emotionally. Uh, at, at this trying time, and for me personally, it's been, it's been, it's been a, a strange existence to slow down to this pace. I don't know if I, I think the last time I did this, I might have been in the womb, um, which is you know 50 years ago. So it's hard to, to, uh, to, to really process all of it because it's constantly being digested and, and debated and, and discussed and and relived and it seems like every day it's it's turn on the news and try to stay positive amidst the 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 news we get and and try to find hope uh for for a new you know a a return to what our lives have been but that return is going to be a different existence now and what does it all mean so there's so many unanswered questions and as a parent first and foremost i just try to answer the questions i get from my kids who are obviously 19 and 25 now, but they're still kids and they want to know how this affects them. Uh, you know, and so I, I just try to stay mentally as strong as I can and as physically uh, healthy as I can uh, in the midst of all this inactivity. Rick Fox, our guest, Fred Rogan, Rodney Pete, AM 570 LA Sports. Rick, let me ask you this. Back in the day, in the Laker heyday, in the Laker run, Doug Christie's wife tried to attack you. Now, oh, yeah, she did. 
When you think back to the, when you think back to that, what do you think? Uh, it always makes me, it always makes me laugh because I think, what was she thinking? Uh, uh, but you know, they say love is blind. That's one of the shows on Netflix. I think I've binge watched everything out there, right? So love will make you do, you know, they'll take you to stretches in, in life that you know is under, you know can it be explained from that person's point of view, right? And and obviously she felt. Uh, that Doug was uh, outmatched and <laughs> in trouble. <laughs> so she, she wanted to get in there and, and, and add some add some value. And and I, look, I love I love it when 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 I see couples that ride together and they stand up for each other and they're in it to the end. And, and she was in it for him. <laughs> she, she was. Hey Rick, Laker fans loved you, loved you, loved you. But when that happened, they really loved you. <laughs> You, you yeah, went yeah, to yeah. legendary yeah. status after that, man. Well, you know what it was, Roddy. I think I think that you know we were so that series had us all on edge. The, the you know the spring before that, and and so you know we had obviously come out on top, and so this was a little bit. Even though it was a preseason game, it was a little bit of a celebratory mood uh, hangover still from the championship. The, you know the third one, and and you know in that moment. You know, you could just sense the, the tension for for the, the Kings in that preseason game, which really for us it was about a quarter of activity, and then we were going to shut it down. And they they showed up for that game like it was game eight of a seven game series, and no one had told them that it was over already. And so you know, so when it poured into the stands like that, uh, I think it just ignited um, you know the Laker fan base. Uh, you know, with the with the renewed sense of you know he, he, these are our rivals, these are our arch and you know nemesis up the road, and this goes on, and and we're gonna we're gonna keep fighting them. It seems <laughs> until they get the message, whether it's on the court or off the court. Wow, you know what? I, I had forgot that the, that actually was a preseason game. It wasn't even a regular season game when that it happened. Was. That's the thing what in the world. It was a preseason game. It, but you know, I, I I guess you know. Look, I would I try to sometimes when I look at that situation, put you know, put the what do you say, put your the shoe, put your foot on in their shoes, uh, and and try and have a mobility of perspective on how they must have felt the whole summer after we we were able to come out of that seven game series on their floor when they had a chance to go to the finals. And look, that was the that was the NBA Finals. Uh, we felt in that Western Conference Championship Series, we felt that was yeah. the NBA Finals. Whoever won that series was going to go on and obviously take care of New Jersey in a, in a series that was much easier than the one we were facing with each other. So, um, you know, they had to live with that. I mean, they, they kept seeing us every year and they couldn't find a way through us. And, and so I would have been equally as frustrated by, by the Lakers and by especially our crew of, you know, six or seven guys that were consistently there for that whole run. I, I would have hated seeing us too. And I probably would have carried that same, frustration and animosity leading up to that as well you know rick it has been a very difficult year for for all of us and certainly in southern california with the loss of kobe bryant uh but on that day and i know you talked about it on tnt there was some when no one really knew who was aboard that that helicopter there were some people that thought you were aboard that helicopter right yeah yeah they sure it was was somebody started that rumor and and I was just looking at uh, like social media today, and, and it seems, and, and they they had a Colin Kaepernick signed a nine year deal with with the, with Nets, the Jets, right? Yeah, I mean the, the Jets, right? And come to find out, it was you know fake news or whatever, and and rumored on social media by someone just starting the rumor, and then it just catches fire, right? And and the fact checking on these in these situations never seems to be enough, and. And the reaction just to bits and pieces of information that can be extrapolated into, you know, full-blown stories of inaccuracy is what I experienced. And unfortunately, uh, my family experienced it. And, and, and man, I tell you, it's, it's, a, it's an odd, strange um, uh, ride for me to have been on because I was in the midst of just processing and hoping that everything that I was hearing uh, um, was not, not real. 
in that in that you know just with my friend and teammate and then to have so many people you know trying to reach out to me which i at first assumed was just to talk about um you know kobe's passing that i didn't want to believe was real um and i didn't want to engage because i was just trying to be you know with my you know with my my daughter in the time and my son who i was trying to you know who'd call me and fortunately hadn't gotten hit with that that, that negative social media stuff yet so i was able to at least be with them before i discovered what was happening so it, 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 it i don't wish it on anybody it's it, it was a, it, it was heartbreaking and wrenching to just be processing it all of us as a, yeah. as a city and, and all of us that love kobe and know him so well to just be processing that to then have to deal with you know something that was far less um significant um but just as wrenching in that moment, it was something that I, I just I, I don't I don't wish ever experiencing again. Yeah, I remember. You know, I, I, like you said, you were with your kids and, and 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 really trying to process everything. And 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 I remember Holly talking to you after that. You just weren't even answering your phone. And and those we were we were obviously devastated by what would happen. And then the second devastation was that we heard that possibly you were there. And then. It was, uh, you know, every five minutes I know Holly was calling, but uh, finally we got the word that you weren't. We, you know, all could take a little bit of a, a breath. But getting back yeah, to, to, no. to, to playing, uh, you know, playing with playing with Kobe because it's, you know, it's notorious that he was, you know, a tough teammate to play with. He was hard on his teammates. What was he like in practice versus in a game? Was he the same guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, in, 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 in this time off, um, Fred and Rodney have been able to spend a lot of time in my house, so I've been able to relive a lot of um, photos, and memories, and memorabilia, and, and just games and stuff cause to pass the time. And and uh, it has been really an opportunity to kind of, you know, kind of go down memory lane and and think of the all of the things we did together, all the times that really were special off the court. And and I, I started to remember how. You know, even from the times that I, when I arrived in L.A., it was Kobe's second year, and from the moment I arrived, how how impressed I was with his intensity level for his age and, how, and his confidence and his skills, his skill sets uh, at that age. Even though he had so much to develop, it seemed that I, I, I remember thinking to myself at, at that age when I was 18, I, I was nowhere near as as physically uh, prepared and as, as as skilled as he was, and that stood out to me being, you know, obviously 20, 29, 30 in, in, in my life and having been in the NBA for you know six, six years at that point, he, he was there and beyond already just from my assessment of him from my first meeting. Uh, and then, you know, just playing and guarding him every day in practice. Like I literally probably spent more time grabbing and pulling and, and <laughs> holding him uh, for eight years uh, because he always he always knew I would give him the same intensity in a practice defensively that he would get in the game, and and I always took pride in the fact that if I was guarding Kobe and I could make his day miserable and harder or difficult, that it was gonna I was a game was always going to be that much easier for me defensively, and that was kind of the relationship we had. Um, there was an earlier on stretch of two to three years where he was breaking through and wanted to be in that starting lineup and, and was trying to figure out how to get in front of Eddie Jones and trying to figure out how to get in front of me and, uh, and try to, you know, break out of this bench role that he had at that first year I was there. And man, holding him off was like, it was, it's Eddie, the practices were worse than the games for me personally, because I could feel the intensity. Eddie could feel the intensity. Um, all the guards could feel him, you know, because uh, he was that. Those those practices were his way of proving to Del Harris and the coaching staff that they were making a mistake, and they needed to make a change. And uh, for me, that first year, you know, that I was a Laker, we we were winning sixty two games. We had a really good young team, and so and so it was really harder for him to break through until we fell short, and then Jerry West made the change and and traded, uh, you know. Eddie and uh, and Nick was gone, and in came in in came the opportunity for Kobe to to become that star, you know, that starter. And, and when we started that 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 lockout season, I'll never forget. Um, he still was not going to start. He was going. Dell Harris was not 
going to star Kobe. And I came down with, um, I came down with plantar fasciitis in my, my feet and because I changed my orthotics and I literally, my legs were shutting down and I couldn't practice. And Jerry came to me and they came to me and they said, look, we want you to take a couple weeks off and get right. And this was in preseason in 99, uh, 2000, 2000, I mean, 1998, 99. Uh, and in those two weeks of not playing in the preseason, Kobe uh, got to start at the small forward position. And he proceeded to – oh, actually, that's right. They didn't trade Eddie Jones until after the second year. He proceeded in that preseason two weeks to average like 20 and 10. And I'll <laughs> never forget thinking to myself, I'm Wally Pipp. I'm never getting back in there. <laughs> never getting it back. <laughs> That's it for me. <laughs> and you know, Eddie was an all-star, and here Kobe was proving that he could not only play the two-guard position, he could play the small forward position and and rebound the ball better than I could and score the ball better than I could and aggressively um, at least create enough defensive intensity visually that, you know, he was going to give his all defensively. So, you know, there was it was obviously an upgrade. And so they came to me and they were like, are you okay going to the bench? And I was like, I don't think that's an, that's not a question. <laughs> I, appreciate, a I appreciate how you're framing it, but look, I'm smart enough to know, let me go, let me go take the six man role and do the most I can do with this and, and let this guy, you know, get in there. I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't letting him get in there. He basically grabbed that, 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 that position from me. And, um, and look, he went on to become an all-star. And yeah. uh, we had four guys that were all-stars that year in New York, and 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 it was it was it was very it was very apropos that that you know he he fought his way through there, but he proved it. You know, he proved it through those preseason games that he was right. He knew he was right. And so <laughs> you know, things you know it's history for now. But I didn't think I'd ever get back in <laughs> in, in the starting lineup, but. I found my way back in there and we became really connected on a whole lot of levels because when he was that starter, I was the one guarding him those first yeah. few years. So uh, I take a lot of, I take a lot of positive memories from that. And, and he would talk to me, you know, he would talk to me um, a lot differently. I think because, because of, you know, my experiences guarding guys, playing guys, playing the small forward position, he ended up being obviously a two guard more than a small right. forward. Um, but you know, I used to just tell him, "You got to be physical. You got to hit them before they hit you." And and the difference in the, in a two guard position and a small guard forward position is, you know, you play you play the paint more than you play the perimeter as a small forward, and you really bang up against the likes of the shacks and the and the you know the guys that are seven feet to you know three hundred and ten twenty pounds, and right. you got to be able to meet that physicality, but also then go out and meet the speed of a guy six two six four that's going, you know, at warp speed on the floor. And Kobe could do all of that, but he, I think he ended up being best suited, not having so much of his energy taken out of him by banging, 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 banging so physically so much against, you know, the bigger guys. Yeah. That, that, that was always, I guess, the best trait of him or best quality that he would always seek knowledge and seek out the guys and try to learn from everybody. Yeah. Um, that that that's the thing that impressed me the most, and I know he was an incredible teammate, tough and hard on his teammates. But you know, you you made that transition, Rick, from from athlete to actor, and I know this firsthand. And as you you, you take the same intensity to that, because you work with my wife Holly, a morning show yeah. mysteries for Hallmark Channel. I gotta ask you right. this though, I gotta ask you this because you yeah. you, you you're the only one that knows, who is yeah. tougher on their teammate. Kobe Bryant or Holly Robinson Pete? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, Holly's at home probably listening right now. Um, Holly is Holly is equally as as um, as focused on on the quality of the work that's being done, and 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 equally as attentive to all the team all the teammates suiting up and showing up with the respect for each other and what we're doing together. Right. Um, Holly just has a comedic way of delivering the message. Kobe didn't care to be funny till later on in his career, meaning Kobe de developed layers to how 
each person that he was a teammate to listened. And I saw that as I got to, to speak to him, you know, in the years where he was, he was a sole captain and he was, it was his, his teams in those, you know, 2009, 2010 years uh, where he became a mentor and a leader and, and understood that everyone doesn't get the message the same way. Right. And you could deliver it with love. And sometimes you can deliver it with humor. Sometimes you can deliver it directly and intensely if you have to. And, you know, Holly, obviously with the amount of experience she's had, you know, from 21 jump street days to all the different shows she's been on as a lead and, and, and working with her. I see that. Like I always tell her, I said, look, Holly, like, there's a reason why you're the number one. Like you have an ability to manage a set, the director, the hair and makeup, like, and keep everything going, interact with the executive producer. And only certain people have those type of qualities and can balance all of that. And then still when the camera rolls and they get on the floor in the game or they, they, they can still be superstars and they can still recognize how to entertain and realize the responsibility that comes with that. So they equally in their, in their respective worlds are great leaders. Um, Holly, her style is completely different than, than Kobe's and how they deliver it. Um, But it gets there. The message gets there and the end product is always great. And, and I, like I said, I've been blessed in my life to always been on amazing teams. I've never been like the star, I'm always like the I'm always the the guy that's the like I guess the Robin or the to the Batman or the co-star, and I'm okay with that because man I've had amazing talented, you know some of the best in the in the world of what they do and I get to ride shotgun you know and support them. Yeah, no man I appreciate you saying that and and yeah she always listens because she always gives me critique and she is a tough teammate tough wife. But that's why I love her. Yeah. Also, real quick, yeah. Rick, because I know my, you know, my kids are into this more than I am, and I didn't even know this, the extreme of esports until I had my kids and they were old enough. But you, you were in this early, man. You, you knew about esports and what was going on. You, you were on top of this game early. Talk about that real quick as, before we let you go. Yes, it's, it's obviously uh, one of the industries that's surviving uh, these times we're in right now, where where the gaming and and Esports world is still competing. They're all online competing. Um, it's it's you know sports at large has changed. It's 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 a pause button and we still celebrate it and miss it and love it and it'll be back. Um, but esports was something you know six years ago that I I took uh, an interest in through my son and as always the case you know kids in the next generation will point to something and you'll either listen or you won't. Um, and I saw it as as the wave of the future uh, as something that would be respected and on par with, with traditional sports and it's grown to that. It's kind of now, as we see, in the, like I said, in this current time we're in, uh, it's getting more traction, more and more traction as, as kids are home and, and gaming at large. Like right now I'm making a game. I'm making a video game right now. And because of what I know to be, you know, sustainable and uh, the gaming industry and esports is something I love, something I, I'm still a part of. And you'll find a lot of our athletes today um, I had a great conversation with Ben, you know, Ben Simmons out of Philly during the All-Star Weekend. Huge gamer. Uh, Shaq and other athletes have been a part of the gaming esports world. So, so you're, I'm sure your kids have been spending some time, whether it's – I know you spend some time with them now too. Uh, yeah. Uh, just the quality time spent between a parent and a kid doing something they love doing I think is valuable and it's right there. And gaming does that and it's going to continue to do that. Hey, Rick, we really appreciate you coming on today. This was just really terrific. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, my pleasure, man. I love you guys. I, I appreciate you guys continuing to entertain us and keep us connected to the sports world and what we love and actually having the culture and, and, and the aptitude to be able to stretch us even further in areas and get us through all of this, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's a joy and, uh, to have a part of our life that we enjoy so much still be there. And, that, 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 and so I'm grateful for you guys doing it. Thanks, Rick. Really appreciate it, man. Stay safe. All right. Okay, guys.